Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girl Fanny Longo, and we are Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So, right about now, we're gonna do another reaction video. But before we get into the reaction, guys, I want to say thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. You're the realest MVP. We are almost getting to 20,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. So, right about now, we're gonna do when Muhammad was a young man story of Muhammad. So, that any further ado, let's get it. So the next bit of information we have was the first job of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said hadith is in Bukhari so it is completely authentic. Allah never sent a Prophet except that he was a shepherd. So they said, not even you, O Messenger of Allah. So he said, yes, I was. I was a shepherd. And I used to tend to the flock of the people of Mecca in return for some qararit, some pennies. What are some of the wisdoms? Why would Allah Azza wa do this? If Allah had willed, our Prophet would have been born in the lap of luxury. Sheep are very similar to men in that they need to be taken care of or else they're gonna go astray. And every single animal has a personality. And the shepherd, understands this personality that you need to treat every animal according to that animal's personality some sheep are stubborn some are soft and gentle right some they know where they're going others they follow the pack some are the leaders some are not so the shepherd gets to understand each and every sheep in the flock and he deals with every animal according to its personality and this is what a leader needs to do and this is what a prophet of Allah needs to do that they need to deal with every person according to their mizaj according to their personality in another few years even a more famous incident occurred and this is called the Hilf al-Fudul or the Hilf al-Mutayyabin the treaty or the pact of Fudul also called the treaty of Mutayyabin and at this stage the Prophet ﷺ is probably in his early 20s what happened was a person from the tribe of Zubayr and Zubayr is a tribe in Yemen and so the Yemenites when you're in Mecca the people did not consider this tribe to be as elite they are a low class tribe and they're very far away. So when you're far away, what this means is you don't have people willing to fight for you, right? So what happens? This person from the tribe of Zubayr sold an item before Hajj. He's come as a merchant. He's brought his leather. He's brought his good. That's how you get your money. And he sold a number of items to Al-As ibn Wa'il, the father of Amr ibn Al-As. And Al-As ibn Al-Wa'il, he is a chieftain. He's a politician. He's a career statesman in the Quraysh. And he's a rich businessman. He sold it to him before Hajj. And Al-As said, I'll give you the money after Hajj before you go back to Yemen. Come to me after and I'll give it to you. So he goes, okay, fine. I can wait that long. I don't need it now. I need it back in Yemen. So he performs the Hajj and then he says, I need my money. Al-As says, come back tomorrow. So he comes back tomorrow. Al-As says, come back tomorrow again. Comes back tomorrow. And then he continues doing this until he realizes that he's not going to get his money back. And so this person goes to the other sub-tribes. And everyone makes an excuse. Why? Because Al-As ibn Wa'il is a politician. He is rich. He is a leader. And therefore, feeling completely trapped and not having any other outlet, he decided to make this a public issue. What did they do in those days? They would write poems. And so one day when everybody is in front of the Kaaba, which is basically everybody would gather around Asr time, all the people of Mecca would now come and they would say this is a social place as well. He now comes and he says out loud his poem that he has compiled. So he says, Ya ala fihrin, O tribe of Fihr, O Quraysh, limadhloomin bita'atahu. I am a one who has been unjustly treated because of my merchandise. Bibatni Makkata, I am in the valley of Makkata. Na iddari wal nafari, far away from my home and far away from people to protect me. Wa muhrimun, I'm still in my ihram. Ash'ath. My hair has not been combed because he's an ihram. Lam yaqdi umratahu. I haven't even finished my umrah. Ya lil rijali. Where are my men to help me? Wa bain al hijri wal hajari. Between the hijr, the maqam Ibrahim, and the hajr, the stone, you are doing this to me. Inna al haram li man tammat karamatuhu. The true haram belongs to those who are noble. Wa la harama li thawb al ghadir al fajri. There is no sanctity to the one who wears a thawb. Most likely there was a thawb in there involved as well. Who wears a thawb while he is a cheat and a steal and a lowly person. So the news spread like wildfire. And Az Zubayr ibn Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet's elder uncle, Az Zubayr ibn Abdul Muttalib, heard of this. And he said, we have to do something about this. This is not going to go on anymore. 
and he convened a gathering of all of the senior members of the Quraysh in the house of somebody whose name you should memorize. He comes up in Sirah over and over again, Abdullah ibn Jud'an. And here is where they agreed to a pact, a treaty. They would side with the oppressed against the oppressor, regardless of which tribe the oppressor belonged to. And they said, even if the one who is shown injustice is from a faraway tribe and the oppressor is from a Quraysh sub-tribe, we will side with the one who has been oppressed and we will get his full right from the oppressor. And they all went in front of the Kaaba and they publicly announced this and they signed their names on a document. Now, there is no document, there is no signature. What do you do in those days? You dip your hands in perfume and you put that perfume on the Kaaba on the same place. Everybody puts it on the same place. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ said, I witnessed in the house of Abdullah ibn Jud'an a treaty that were I asked to uphold it even in Islam, I would do so. If I were to ask to follow the treaty even now, I would do so. And I would not be willing to give up my place for a lot of red camels. Meaning, if you were to tell me, if you were to give me a lot of money and I were not present at that treaty, I would not do so. I would not be willing to do so. In that treaty, he's saying, they all agreed that the rights would be given back to the ones who deserve them and that no oppressor would have the upper hand over the one who was oppressed. Um, I was thinking that we're gonna. Oh, this is like episode four. I see. Yeah, the um, other episodes have pretty much been talking about, about? Uh, the lineage Muhammad came from. Mm, that's what why I was... he went through the loss he suffered with his parents and others that actually kept him. His adoption. That's why it kind of threw me, uh, I mean, threw me off because I was like trying to understand the story of Muhammad. So it's like a continuation. This is episode four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I got some like. Um, I can go first. Yes, yeah, please, because I kind of. I feel like they could have spoken about him a little more in this. Because it's more like the uncle came up with the solution, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Which is not a bad thing. It's like he had someone to look up to that was doing the right things in society. Mm -hmm. And maybe his character is developed from that because I think all this is about being a character, how he was a shepherd coming from humble beginnings, and then God just gives him this big post in the world mm -hmm. where people have to follow him. Do you understand? All right, and they're talking about the oppressed and the oppressors, um, like they're giving an upper, upper hand to the ones who are oppressed and the ones who oppress them while given side eye side eye or something like that I mean, it's, um, I think it's a good thing to come up with a brotherhood that actually it doesn't have to be a brotherhood but what can I call it? is there any other way like it? a committee that actually deals with the injustices in society because yeah. how do you as a foreigner go to Zambia and you're mistreated or people treat you unjustly and maybe Zambians are just looking at it and ignoring that's why are, it. That's why, that's why those, most people uh, stood up and said, you know what? That's why there are embassies and all those kind of stuff. I mean, in today's world. I mean, when you talk about the oppressors or the people who are being... Um, I mean, the people who are oppressing others, the thing is, um, maybe you've seen something different or maybe you've seen someone just moving from one particular point to another. Let's say one has been, okay, let's say favored or maybe given an opportunity. And then you that you're a bigger brother, or maybe you, you think that you're big, bigger in the body, or maybe you're bigger in size, or maybe you have an upper hand somewhere. You try to oppress him or her not to be able to reach the heights that he wants to go to. You understand? So, I mean, I feel like... Um, that's some it's some sort of injustice somehow because uh why would you want to oppress somebody when you can just try and come together and unite and form a very good ally or something like that i don't know i feel like 
injustice in the society should be protected by by uh, by people who who have uh, I mean who ha who think that they have the power to I mean to 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 form uh, what do you call like a, like a group of people who protect the ones who are uh, have uh, what do you call this the innocent ones yeah um so yeah that's that i mean that was good and the way you put it was actually great uh if there's anything that you guys want us to, to drop the link in the comment section below make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and we'll see you in our next reaction video and do so you